I'm Marcus Thibodeau, I'm a wildlife biologist for ODWC, and today we're out at Black Kettle WMA, and we're doing a virtual field day on turkey habitat management. So this was going to be an in-person field day, but with the COVID-19 stuff going on, we decided to bring the field day to you guys, do it online. So today we're going to go over the treatments that we've been doing to increase wild turkey habitat. So we're doing this uh, based off of research. So we worked with OSU and put satellite GPS collars on wild turkeys at Paxaddle Wildlife Management Area, just on the north side of the river. And we found that the treatment and the habitat management of riparian areas are like these hardwood draws full of cottonwoods, elm trees, uh, were really important for turkeys, not just for roosting and loafing, but it's where they spend the majority of their time. So only about 8% of pack saddle is made up of habitat like this, but we found that 75% of those turkeys time was spent within about 20 yards of that area and that's why we really want to focus on making this habitat really good for turkeys. So I'm with Dwayne Elmore from the OSU Wildlife Extension Office and Todd Stewart with the Forest Service and we're going to talk about the treatment areas, uh, pre-treatment, how we select them and why, the treatment areas themselves, how we do it, and the maintenance of those areas. So I'm going to turn it over to Dwayne. He can kind of talk about uh, why we're selecting this area. Thank you, Marcus. So as Marcus mentioned, uh, these hardwood riparian areas, these low areas that have trees in them, they're really important for wild turkey. And in a lot of Oklahoma, especially in the western half of the state, they're rare on the landscape. There's not a lot of hardwoods for turkeys to use. And because of fire suppression over many decades, uh, we've got these eastern red cedar that have grown up in the understory. You can see behind me the cedars that are up under this large cottonwood. And this is a problem for a few reasons. One, eventually there's going to be a fire on this site, a, a wildfire at some point, and that cedar serves as a ladder fuel. It'll allow the fire to get into the canopy and potentially kill that cottonwood. And there's not a lot of cottonwoods out here or elm for the turkeys to use, so we don't want to lose those trees. So that's one potential problem. But other than that, the turkeys themselves don't like to use trees like this when they have this mid-story, this dense cedar that has grown up under them. And there's several reasons for that. One is that uh, when they're using this for roosting cover, they cannot see any potential predators on the ground below them. So it makes them very uncomfortable to pitch off the roost. Now they can still pitch out onto the prairie beyond the tree, in some, in some cases, but, but it does limit how many of the trees are used for roosting. Additionally, turkeys use these uh, riparian areas, these dense shaded cottonwoods and elms, to stay cool during the summer. And when you have this, uh, this encroachment of the cedars, again, they can't see potential predators. They don't feel comfortable being in those areas. They tend to avoid them, but also there's not a lot of airflow moving through. So it's, it's not, it, it may not be as cool because of, of the airflow coming through, but it certainly limits their use because of, uh, of predator avoidance. So we want to talk today about what we can do to fix that. And, and there's several things we can do. We can uh, mulch these trees in place, or we can cut them uh, and then pull them out from under the cottonwoods. But if you're going to just cut the trees, it's really important that you pull those cedars out from the base of the cottonwood because when you follow up with a prescribed fire, we don't want those fuels at the base of the cottonwood that might injure it. So this is a pre-treatment area, as Marcus mentioned, and we're next we're going to go to a spot where it has recently been treated so that you can see the difference in how a turkey would perceive it. Now we're at a treatment area that we treated about six months ago down at Black Kettle WMA. And with me is Todd Stewart, biologist with the U.S. Forest Service. And so we're going to talk about how we did this and uh, some of the benefits. All right, as you can see behind me, we have a really good example of a post-treatment. We came in here and uh, wrote a prescription for the area of what we wanted it to look like afterwards. Basically what we did is we came in and we looked at everything that was non-beneficial to turkeys. And with that, we came up with a prescription of Anything within 75 feet of a cotton tree that was not wildlife friendly, we outmarked as a removed tree. So everything within 75 feet, gone. Outside of the 75 feet within the riparian area, we brought it to a six inch DBH. 
Everything under 60, 6 inch DBH was removed and opened it up for this wonderful looking habitat that we have now. Uh, we're about six months into this treatment which was done using mechanical masticators which are rotary head machines that come in and create giant piles of mulch um, which was also taken into in our prescription. Uh, we, with removing so much cedar we didn't need really large piles of mulch just sitting around so we limited that amount of mulch by our contractor to six inches or less of mulch. Um, another thing that we looked at again with heavy machinery working in a riparian area we wanted to make sure that the habitat was not damaged by the equipment so we did put some restrictions on the uh, contractor in order what he could and couldn't do within the stream zone area. Um, and then other ways that you might if you don't have the money or you don't have the equipment available uh, you can come in here as lop and scatter. Um, that was done as well by our contractors in the areas again with in order to protect the habitat um, we made them go in and remove all trees um, cut them down to no more than four foot in length and not piled more than two feet high um, in order to keep that nice and open quality area for the turkeys. Um, as you can see six months in we've already got good for forb production coming into the area. Um, forbs are very beneficial turkeys. Uh, they produce seeds in the fall. During the spring and summer they produce lots of insects which is highly important to the pulse growth in the first six weeks. 90% um, of the pulse growth is based off the protein eaten by uh, eaten insects, provided by insects eaten. Um, other areas, that you, other things you might see out here um, that are very beneficial, you can see the large open areas. Uh, we have different heights of roosting available for the poults as well as the adults. And uh, you can already see some of the uh, forbs coming in uh, just six, six months after. We've got daisies, we've got verbena, ragweed, uh, there's other legumes out here. So all in all, really good quality habitat coming in for the turkeys. Um, and this was all done through money through partnership. Uh, since 2010, we've been working with Oklahoma Department of Wildlife Conservation, National Wild Turkey Federation, and other NGOs in order to pro produce enhanced habitat for wildlife. So immediately we can see how opened up these roost trees are. Now these are cottonwoods, but any big tree that's got big horizontal branches can be used as a roosting tree for turkeys. The visibility we can see is dramatically increased now that all that woody encroachment has been cleared. This helps not only for finding predators, but when the, there's no actual obstructions for the turkeys pitching in and out of the roost trees now. This is not just a one and done treatment. There is going to be maintenance required because we are dealing with a living habitat. Um, you know, the way we maintain the way we maintain this area uh, is through fire. A lot of times, uh, we also do some other mechanical controls such as mowing. Um, if you look up on the hillsides behind us, uh, we recently burned this area during one of our summer growing burns uh, just over a year ago. It was completed. If you walked out through there, it's got really good insect production, for production. Uh, it's just perfect turkey habitat in order to meet their daily requirements. Requirements. Okay. So this was treated with a masticator using heavy pieces of equipment, but a private landowner, they could come in here and actually just do a prescribed fire if the cedar trees were small enough, or, you know, get in here with a pair of loppers or a chainsaw, cut them out and drag them out. It's hard work, but it's an instant benefit for the turkeys. And so as you can see, it opened up these big roost trees, and so what makes a good roost tree is just a very big tree with big horizontal branches that the turkeys can, can hang out on. And this is really important, especially in western Oklahoma, the availability of, of roost trees. We have a lot of cottonwoods in areas where they're, they, they are at, these riparian areas, but they're not available to the turkeys because of this woody encroachment. First stop, we looked at a pre-treatment area and why we needed to treat it. In the second stop, we saw what it looked like immediately after restoration. And here in our third stop, we're gonna talk about the future maintenance. So I'm joined again with Todd Stewart with the US Forest Service and Dwayne Elmore at of OSU Extension. And so uh, Todd, if you wanna tell us about what you guys have done here at Black Kettle. 
This area right here behind us is uh, one of the areas that we treated approximately four years ago. As you can see, it's a uh, little bit different than what we just visited. Uh, the vegetation has come back really nice, but yet it's still really open feeling. Uh, really good insect production from all the forbs and grasses that have come back in. Uh, we maintained this uh, about six months ago, again, with me some mechanical mowing, um, but we've also done some intermittent grazing as well throughout, and we've even put some prescribed fire back in on it. So we've done a little bit of everything in order to keep the cedars from coming back and taking back over the riparian area. I think that's really important. If you do this type of restoration work, you're going to have to follow up with additional treatment because the cedar will come back and you'll be right back to where you start, which is an expensive uh, a fix. So if you can periodically put some type of disturbance on these sites, you can maintain it indefinitely. And, and as uh, Todd said, you know, there's different ways of doing that. You might have to do some spot mechanical treatment for trees that get past you, but using a prescribed fire is a great tool to to keep most of those woody plants from encroaching into these, into the understory of these uh, desirable roost trees for wild turkey. Also, the prescribed fire will stimulate lots of food producing plants, which will bring insects, which is a, a, a primary food for wild turkey most of the year. And you can even use grazing um, to help open it up and keep uh, patches uh, of, of really forb rich areas. So whatever you do, just get in a, in a pattern of doing periodic disturbance probably every three or four years and, and rotate that across your property. You know, what is behind me now is going to be really good nesting cover next year. So we don't want to remove all of that. We want to maintain some nesting cover, but maybe part of it we're going to burn in the spring and part of it will burn in the summer and just have a rotation going of different patches that have different time sense disturbance and that will help optimize the habitat for wild turkey and other wildlife on your property. And if you'd like help uh, trying to decide how to do this management and, and maybe even get some cost share assistance on your property, be sure to contact the Wildlife Department, the USDA Natural Resource Conservation Service, or groups like the National Wild Turkey Federation who can send a biologist out to help evaluate your property and give some recommendations.